What is going on, everybody? It's the France, and we are for a money or a SmackDown review for January the 15th, 2020. We are on the road to the Royal Rumble, and the biggest question coming into the night show was how are we going to get Adam Pierce out of the match at the pay per view? And who was going to take his place? Because you know it's not going to happen. It's, there's no way we're going to have Adam Pierce versus. Um, versus um, Roman Reigns at the pay-per-view. Adam Pearce has been retired for, what is it, seven years almost? The dude just, it, it wasn't going to work. No matter what stipulation they put on this thing, Adam Pearce is just, he's not in ring shape. He's not even, like, probably one of those guys who's been keeping himself up to be able to wrestle a match, so how are they going to get themselves out of this? And honestly, I'm just... <laughs> I'm not impressed with how they did how they did it. So we'll get to that in a bit. Backstage, we start the show off with backstage Roman Reigns and Paul Heyman. Roman's looking over the contract. Paul Heyman's looking over it too and says, "It's just every order. It's it's the same contract that you see every single time. It's the same BS. It's just." They take the contract that you saw at, like, say, TLC has a contract signing. They take that contract, they take out TLC, and they put the Royal Rumble in, so on and so forth. This match needs a stipulation. One that lets Roman Reigns be Roman Reigns and teach Adam Pearce a lesson. So, he goes and says, I'll take this and handle it. He thanks Roman as he walks off. Then we go to Jey Uso versus Shinsuke Nakamura, and my god, it's been fucking three years, almost. Shinsuke Nakamura's babyface music comes back, and you're wondering, how does Shinsuke Nakamura have his babyface music from back when he was in NXT, when everyone else is losing their CFO's music? Simple. I'm pretty sure CFO's did not make Shinsuke Nakamura's theme music. I could be wrong. But I'm pretty sure Nakamura's theme was made by, uh, I can't even remember the goddamn name, that violinist who was there who did Shinsuke Nakamura's theme his, on his SmackDown debut. That guy and I think somebody else helped make Shinsuke Nakamura's theme. So that's why they're using his theme and can use his theme. The only thing missing, of course, is an... I know that they're keeping no more words from Jeff Hardy because they want it in front of a crowd. This is missing the crowd. The ability for the crowd to be there for the first time in almost three years, sing Shinsuke Nakamura's babyface theme, and sing him to the ring. One, I am glad that he's babyface again because if you want to be honest about it, Nakamura's heel turn was... Just, it, it was all over the place. He turned heel to feud with AJ Styles because you, they didn't want it to be a one-time thing. And you didn't want to have Babyface versus Babyface for six months, for the five months that they feuded against each other. Just, and then after that, of course, he won the United States Championship. Didn't do anything with it. He kind of disappeared after beating, I think it was Finn Balor for it. Then... He did nothing for forever, then went and won the tag team, like, did nothing with Rusev as tag team champ, like, tagging with him. Then eventually he found his way to tagging up with um, Cesaro. They won the tag team titles for a bit and haven't really done anything since. So, hopefully this will be a new leaf for Nakamura. Maybe they're going to push him as a baby face because, quite honestly... Anybody, it's Roman Reigns is the heel, 100%. If Nakamura, and this is what a lot of people I saw all over social media tonight, everybody is like, they don't want to see Nakamura face him at the Royal Rumble, or even at the next pay-per-view. Everybody wants to see Nakamura face Roman Reigns at WrestleMania for the Universal title and win it, making up for the abysmal decision to not have him beat AJ Styles at WrestleMania in 2018. That was, in my opinion, one of the biggest missteps. Like, having both Rumble winners lose in 2018 was a massive mistake. Both of those two should have won the, their respective matches. Of course, we had to wait a year later just to even get a happy, happy, happy win for 
everybody, all the big championship matches at WrestleMania when Becky, Seth, and Kofi all won their matches. But still, Asuka and Shinsuke both should have won, and of course they didn't. Anyway, we come to the ring, and Jey Uso makes his way to the ring. Michael Cole welcomes us to SmackDown, joined at ringside by Corey Graves, of course. Uso takes the mic and talks about how he and Reigns run this show. And I even put this out there. Jay needs to remember that you both don't run this show. Roman runs this show. Every single time you open your mouth and say that you run this, you we run this show, you end up getting your ass kicked by your ne- by your cousin. So you might want to s- stay in line and realize that no, you guys don't run this show. Only Roman does. You're just his obedience follower. So he's talking about what his plans are. He's going to enter himself into the Royal Rumble. He's going to win the Royal Rumble. He's going to go to Monday Night Raw. And he is going to beat Dream McIntyre or Oldberg. And I love the fact that he actually said Oldberg. That's a props to me. To him. But Pierce will be finding out the hard way at the Rumble. Uso says if he thought we were satisfied with just SmackDown. Think again. Talks about the Rumble of course. And... It's, it's, the, it's the bloodlines of WWE who own, who own it all. But before the Rumble, Uso says he has business with Shinsuke Nakamura. And he's going about everything bragged about the Gauntlet Match performance last week. But it's nothing special, especially when he and Reigns shut down Nakamura when they felt like it. Until the music interrupts and out comes to um, Nakamura, he actually again said has his old music, which is great. To the piped-in pop. <sighs> Nakamura drops him and kick to the kick to the head. Nakamura celebrates his um, his music hits again, and we go to commercial break. Back from break, and we have ourselves a hell of a match. These two went out there, and Nakamura is beating up on Jey Uso. He's dominating the match, and all of a sudden, Cesaro comes out for whatever reason. And obviously, these two have been a tag team, so it makes sense that he wants to be out there for his buddy. Here's the thing. Nakamura is a babyface now. Cesaro is clearly, clearly still a heel. He's still a heel, and he's out there, like, with his buddy. And I'm thinking to myself that I can just smell it. I can see it a mile away that it might not be tonight, and it wasn't tonight. But but when all said and done, Cesaro will turn on Shinsuke Nakamura. Maybe if Shinsuke Nakamura gets a title match... That's when Cesaro screws Nakamura and starts their feud. So I don't think Nakamura is going to be winning any championship anytime soon because that's going to lead to a feud between these two. Just just how it seems. I mean, even after this match was over, and the finish was interesting because Jey Uso rolls him up, has his feet on the ropes. Charles counts one, two, three. But when he hits the three, he sees Jey's feet were on the rope and says, Nope, 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 we're not doing this. Nope, it's not over. You had your feet on the rope. Uso pulls a dumb babyface type thing and starts arguing with the ref. Nakamura rolls him over and then hits the Kinshasa. One, two, three. And Shinsuke Nakamura wins because of Jay Uso's stupidity. After the match, of course, Cesaro comes in. They celebrate. Nakamura is, does his, goes up to the rope and does his celebration thing. And you just see in the back behind him that Cesaro is waiting and waiting for his perfect opportunity. It's not tonight because it sees no benefit. Oh, I screwed my boy. I, I, I attacked my best friend or my friend who was my tag team partner. But what did I get out of it? Nothing. There's no satisfaction. There's no real reason to do it yet because Nakamura isn't done anything that, like, Nakamura's not in the position right now that... Um, Cesaro could have that satisfaction of screwing him over. So, yeah, there's that. So, yes, Nakamura gets the win. Great to see him back in the babyface role. Let's see where it goes. Cesaro will face Daniel Bryan later in the show, which I'm no, I'm not the only one saying that if you give these guys 20 minutes put a title in this or some kind of stipulation. Maybe it's a number one contendership for the Universal Championship or the Intercontinental Championship. These two would go out there and tear the house down. Tonight's match was was good. Was good. 
Was it as good as it could be? No, they, of course, it is a TV match, and it's not one of those. Give them 20 minutes or 30 minutes and let them go out there. But it was still a pretty good match. And, of course, Baron Corbin takes on Rey Mysterio after what happened last week in the gauntlet match. And then, and then, WWE takes Bayley, the SmackDown Women's Champion, for 380 straight days, one full year and some change, and give her a talk show. Ding dong, hello. God, like, the minute Bayley and Sasha Banks split, and Bayley and Sasha Banks stopped teaming together and stopped feuding together, Bailey just fell off the face of the earth in WWE's eyes. They gave this woman a 380-day title reign. Honestly, it should have been longer than that if they didn't give Charlotte Flair that token title win right before she was shipped off to Monday Night Raw. Bailey should have had like a 500, I think it's like a 500-day title reign. Which would have been fucking huge and would have been the longest, and see, it would have been the longest continuous title reign in the modern world, wrestling, in the modern day for WWE, passing CM Punk up. But no, they decided to give Charlotte a five day title reign, which still to me made no sense. But that's neither here nor there. So, Bailey is going to have her own talk show, Ding Dong Hello, with her special guest, Bianca Belair. Two of the best they have sh- reduced to stupid shit like this. Wow. Sonya Deville is backstage talking with Adam Pierce. Deville wants to talk strategy for Pierce again, but Hal Heyman walks in. She he shakes hands with Pierce with Deville. Heyman hands Pierce the contract in the Universal Title match and says Pierce has the opportunity of a lifetime in his hand. He goes on and says his sales pitch and reveals that the contract makes Pierce versus Reigns a no disqualification match. Heyman interrupts his own promo to tell Deville how good her perfume is working, which creeps Deville out, as it should. Pierce is annoyed by Heyman with the pitch. He ends up signing the contract and says this will mean that he gets injured, which is what Heyman and Reigns wants to see. Hands the contract back to Heyman after signing it, and we go back to commercial break. Back from break, and here's Drew Uso arguing with Charles Robinson. Rob- Uso says Robinson is about to lose his job if he doesn't do it right, and he storms off, and Charles Robinson is left to ponder. What the hell does that mean? Could he really lose his job if he doesn't do the right way, do his job right in the eyes of Uso? Who knows? We see how Dolph Ziggler and Robert Ruby defeated the Street Profits last week. After, of course, the week before that, attacking um, his um, um, Montez Ford's knee. Caleb Baxter is backstage with the Profits. They dismiss the idea of how they might be scared of the champs and going about how they're going to run it back. Montez isn't happy with what Rude and Ziggler did to Montez. I'm sorry. Dawkins isn't isn't happy with what they what Rude and Ziggler did to Montez for. They said the rematch happens, bodies will drop, and says they're up and they want the smoke. And I love the fact that they actually mentioned the tag team Rudolph named Rudolph, which was a name that the fans actually started talking I'm um, calling Ziggler and Rude because WWE never gave them a tag team name, they just threw them together. Which, by the way, I fucking hate that. If you're going to throw two guys together or two women together, give them a fucking name. I don't care what it is. Ziggler and Rude have t- shirts that call them the Dirty Dogs. Fine, whatever. Give them name. Paul Heyman is comes into a discussion with Roman Reigns and Apollo Crews, which Cole makes a good point. When, is Apollo Cru- when did Apollo Crews and Roman Reigns become friends? As he asked after this happened. He tells Pierce that the match is going to be a no-disqualification match. Roman's like, I didn't want that. I never wanted a no-disqualification match. I want a last-man-standing match. Heyman says he'll never go for a last-man-standing match. Roman's like, yes, he will, because you're going to tell him, make him, and he's going to tell him he's going to sign this contract in the ring tonight. So, of course, that's your main event segment. And he's talking to Apollo Crews about what? I don't know. Rey Mysterio versus Corbin is coming up later, but we go to Natalia versus Liv Morgan. Out come the Riot Squad with Billy Kay, who is trying to be punk rock, which she's not and never will be. 
So I had to turn the volume down on this match simply because Billy Kay went on commentary. I don't care if the Moronics aren't together anymore or not. When either one of them are on commentary or put a mic in front of their face, I go on mute because the Moronics are terrible. So, basically this match is Liv Morgan, it, well, a good portion of it um, was, WWE, was Natalia just, for whatever reason, gets very aggressive, just starts beating the hell out of Liv Morgan, puts her, like, shoves her, like, her hand into um, the chin of Liv Morgan, and she's, like, yelling at her, just got completely pissed off. Then Liv Morgan gets a comeback. She's coming back at it. But in the end, Billy Kay cost Liv Morgan the match. Because she she first goes back over to Liv, Ruby Riot. She tries to start cheering up, over, up Liv, like cheer on Liv Morgan. Then she walks over to the side when the, where Tamina's at. And she starts saying something. Then Tamina, she backs away. And she goes around the other side. And she gets into the ring. Ruby Riot tries to stop her a little too late. And then, as she's going from one side to the other, she gets, Liv Morgan gets rolled up and squashed for the one, two, three. Billy Kay screwed, screwed um, Liv Morgan. So fucking dumb. Of course, you have to show how stupid Billy Kay is and how nobody wants to be her friend. And it's just. Bullshit after bullshit after bullshit stuff that I don't even want to see. I digress. So, after that, we see what happened with the gauntlet match between Rey Mysterio and Corbin last week. And then we have that match. And the story in this match is what is happening on the outside. Dominic is on commentary. And Dominic is got to work on his speaking because, my God. He's being asked things by Corb by um, Graves and Cole, and he just sounds so bland, so generic. Like, this guy has no character development going on. He just seems like, oh, yeah, I love, I, I, I'm so happy to be here. I love, I want to win the tag team titles with my dad. It's his fight. I don't want to have to get in there. I don't want to mess his business up. And it's just so painstakingly cringy to listen to him talk because... He brings nothing. This is the this is definitely like he has the in ring skill. He does. There's no doubt about it. He wouldn't be WWE wouldn't even give him a chance if he couldn't have if he didn't have any ring in ring skill. In the few matches that he's had, it's been of course against Murphy and um, Seth Rollins. Which, by the way, speaking of Murphy, where's Aaliyah and Murphy at? For months, Aaliyah came out with her brother and, and dad, and then she started this relationship with Murphy. So, here's the thing I wonder. They haven't been seen in about a month and a half, right? Two months, maybe? And I, I have to wonder, will, will Murphy disappear for, until he shows up at the Rumble, goes in there, wrestles or whatever, gets eliminated, and the next time we see him, he's not around the uh, Mysterious anymore, He's not with her with um, Ali anymore, and they're just gonna drop her. They're gonna drop the whole storyline completely. That's what it feels like, and that's honestly what I think they're going to do. That that's that's the only thing I can think of, is that WWE has dropped Murphy and Ali as a couple, and they're not even going to write it off. They're just going to say we're done. That's it. That's all I gotta say about that. I think that's what they're going to do. Is that the next time we? See so also part of this match is that you have Rey Mysterio going up at Corbin. Corbin every so often yelling at and like insulting Dominic on the outside. Corey Graves egging him on to try and do out there and um, defend his father's pride and do something to stand up for himself. He has to. Um, Make his own path. He can't just follow in his father's footsteps. And Dominic just doesn't... Like, again, in-ring skill, good. It's going to improve. Mic skill, terrible. Like, the whole time I'm sitting here like, this guy's leagues, like... 
he he honestly if wwe really wanted to be fair to dominic they would have put him in nxt in the performance center to work on his comments on his on everything yes like i said in ring skill fine it'll get better with more matches he has his presentation right now he's just he's just um Ray Mysterio's son and that's what he's going to be and honestly I think he should carve his own path not be Prince Mysterio as he wants to be come up with his own fucking name he wants to wear a mask little too early late on that one you already you, people already seen your face so a mask wouldn't matter unless they want to do something to quote unquote disfigure his face so he's getting egged on by both the words of Corbin and um, Corey Graves. So he tries to get up and do something. Corbin levels him. They get back in the ring. He Ray Mysterio looks like he's getting ready to do something. Dominic tries to come in. Ray stops him, and Ray gets pushed into Dominic. End of days one, two, three, and Ray Mysterio loses because of his son. Now, I'm not all for Baron Corbin winning anything, really, but this pays into the story of Rey Mysterio and Dominic, which, again, it feels like the whole Mysterio family thing is just down to Rey Mysterio and Dominic. Now, for the time being, if they just want Rey Mysterio to do the talking for these two, that is fine, because Dominic needs to work on all of that. He just... His, his like stature, for me, in wrestling took a big hit tonight because it was terrible. His entire time on commentary was just terrible. Later on, we see them in the back arguing, and Corbin and he like. <clears throat> Rey Mysterio says that I'm not trying to back down from anybody. I'm doing something. Sm I'm doing. I'm taking a smart route, and goes on the list of accomplishments of Baron Corbin. Ray and Dominic's like, I don't care about any of that. And then Ray's like, if you really want to take on Baron Corbin, we I have, I know just the guy we need to talk to. Who that is? Hell if I should fucking know. Adam Pierce is walking backstage when Heyman approaches him with the contract. Pierce asks if Roman Reigns signed the contract for more Rumble. Heyman says there's a little wrinkle, but no. Reigns didn't sign the contract. Heyman says Reigns agreed with Pierce concern with the no DQ match. And another pitch, but Ray, Pierce doesn't want to hear it. He asks Heyman what he's going to do with this. Heyman mentions the last man standing stipulation and tries to sell it on him. Pierce asks, "What? Who will that benefit?" But Heyman says he's not the one, in, not in the business of giving spoilers. Pierce is once again annoyed, but he's about to give the con sign the contract. Heyman tells him to take his time because he'll be able to take it out, talk it over with Reigns in the ring later tonight. Heyman isn't walking off. Says he's going to consider this handled. Moving on, we have crew members setting up the ding dong hello, don't give a shit, it was just her, and um, Bailey chit chatting about the shit, don't really care. Another talk show that I can't stand, these things are terrible. And moving on to something that actually matters. Carl sent us the Alpha Training Academy segment for the earlier tonight with Otis, Gable, and the Royal Rumble for the Royal Rumble. Brian is Training backstage with them, Caleb Braxton walks up and asks about how the Alpha Trainer has boosted his chances for the Rumble. When Cesaro walks in, mocks them for everything, and um, Brian pretty much says, "We'll show. I'll show you how this go. How well this training has worked tonight." So we go to Daniel Bryan versus Cesaro. This was great. This was awesome. I wish again. This is because it is TV. I wish this could have went a lot longer. If Cesaro or um, Cesaro or Daniel Bryan were champion of something, and this was a championship match or a number one contendership match for the IC title, or Universal title at a pay per view, sign me up. These two were fucking great. Just so much. They could go. Now, I don't know what happened with Cesaro, but he ended up getting busted on the back of his head. It wasn't that bad. It was a minor cut, it seemed like, because it healed up when we came back from commercial break at one time. Daniel Bryan tried to, was doing his just kicks to Cesaro while he was on the um, ring post, and Cesaro ducked, so Daniel Bryan ended up hitting his, his calf there. And these guys just went out there and just tore the house down as much as they could. And Brian goes for the um goes for the um running knee, gets caught in an uppercut, 
Neutralizer, one, two, three, Cesaro gets the win. Now, like I said before, these two could give you a hell of a match anytime. And usually it's like, oh, Daniel Bryan lost, but not in this segment. Daniel Bryan losing Cesaro does nothing bad to Daniel Bryan. My problem with this is that this entire match, fucking Michael Cole is talking like, oh, this would be a statement win for Cesaro. This will be something that helps him take the next step. This is like, this motherfucker has been in WWE for 10 plus years. I believe Cesaro made his in-ring debut on the main roster in 2011. Am I right? I think it was then. Why the fuck are you talking as if like, Cesaro is a rookie in WWE? The only thing keeping Cesaro back and down is Vince McMahon and his fact that, oh, Cesaro can't cut a great promo, so we can't do, we can't push this guy. Cesaro went out there and showed you just how good he can be and how good Daniel Bryan is. Both of these two went out there and, again, this should have been your main event. Fuck that goddamn contract signing, even with the way it ended. This was the should have been the main event. This should have been the last match, even if they wanted to do that other thing. But we had to have another match after this, by the way. This was by far the best match on the night and was good. It was good. It was great. Now, I'm hoping we to see this again, but again, Michael Cole just pisses me off. Oh, this th this was a statement win by by um this was this is this is a statement win for Cesaro. I'm like, how? Exactly how? Daniel Bryan is one of the best in WWE. He will be one of the best in WWE for a good while. But s are you kidding me? I, I, I just don't understand how you can sit there and try and disrespect these guys and say this was a statement win. This isn't this isn't a young guy coming up from NXT. For the very first time. Like when Keith Lee made his debut. And his first pay-per-view match was beating Randy Orton. In record time it felt like. That was a statement win. Too bad he didn't go anywhere for a couple months. Until he had his WWE Championship match two weeks ago. Cesaro. A guy who's been on the main roster for so long. Beating Daniel Bryan. Which if I'm correct. This is not the first time he's beaten Daniel Bryan. How is this a statement win? Was it a good match? Yes. Was it a statement win? No. Nothing no, no match that like of a main roster person or anybody in WWE TV right now that Cesaro wins, unless he was go out there, turn babyface, and beat Roman Reigns, would be a statement win. Daniel Bryan is not like one. Is not somebody you beat to get a statement win for somebody who's been in the business for almost twenty years, maybe even more. Ah, uh, just wow, just just wow. Again, hell of a match. Don't give a fuck what anyone else says. Not a statement win. WWE has just got... Like... like it, now, now, if this is something that WWE is doing to try and boost Cesaro up and eventually push him, fine, I guess. But you're really disrespecting Cesaro saying this is a statement win when he's had bigger wins. He's the first ever Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal winner. Even though we know that match meant, not, means nothing now. Just, oh my god, that was dumb. This is why I want to knock, I just want to knock Michael Cole out sometimes, I swear. Kelly Braxton's backstage with Carmella and her sommelier, Reginald. She says she told the truth about SmackDown Women's Champion Sasha Banks. And you know what? We haven't seen her since I beat her two weeks ago. Because she's hiding from me. Sasha Banks shows up. Reginald gets in the way. And Sasha's like, are you serious? Well, tell your little girl here that... She can have her title match if I can have you in a match first. And so Sasha Banks runs off, walks off. Reginald just seems a little like, what? Really? What the fuck? And Carmella's like, we got this. We got this. Apollo Crews versus Sami Zayn. Again, I don't know what the relationship between Apollo Crews and Roman Reigns is. And I was wondering, could this mean that this match you'll see in a more aggressive Apollo Crews? And honestly, at the beginning, it looked like that was going to be the case, but it didn't last very long as he just went back to being normal Apollo Crews. Big E, the Intercontinental Champion, is out here on commentary laying on a couch with a 
jar, a, a, a cup of, I think, berries or something, a cup, a cup of gummies or whatever, and a mini fridge with the door opened. Please tell me that thing was not actually plugged in. Because you're wasting a lot of electricity doing that, and you're fucking the, um, the cooling unit up. Just saying. Probably wasn't, but it's just one of those things. So, Apollo Crews is down here having a match with Sami Zayn. Sami Zayn, of course, is um, pissed off. He's still all about this whole conspiracy thing about him being, um, not winning, like him losing the Intercontinental title in, as he calls it, questionable fashion. Even Corey Graves brings this up, brings it up about Big E being champion and how it's questionable. And Big E's like, I didn't book the match. I was in a, it was a Lumberjack match. They Lumberjack. That's what they do. But, so, Sammy, Sammy and the referee have words. And, oh yeah, they decided that, well, we did it once tonight when it came to cheating and trying to win and getting caught. Let's do it again. This time, Sami Zayn had Apollo Crews by the tights. Jessica Carr got a solid. And he had a words with her. It didn't lead directly to the win, uh, to the um, results of the match, because they had wrestled a little bit more. He gets him in the um, half the exploded suplex, hits it, goes for the um, Huluva kick, gets stopped with that. He gets rolled up. <laughs> Apollo Crews has him rolled up, and as Big E put it, he was knuckle deep in the tights. One, two, three. Apollo Crews gets the win. Of course, um, the Sammy's not happy because he got busted for it, but Apollo Crews didn't, even though Apollo Crews did it behind her back. So there's that. After the match, he goes out, grabs the title for a minute, which it may, I noticed for the first time since he won the title, Big E doesn't have... His plates on his championship. I'm like, that just tells you that they did the whole Big E title change thing on a whim. They didn't have his plates ready. I mean, here's my thing about this. WWE makes a lot of money. Has all these title plates for everybody else. Big E and, like, everybody should have a title plate ready to go from the get-go. Like, if you sign a WWE contract and they have some kind of, like, something in mind for you... They should have plates for you for any championship you supposedly could win ready to go. Just saying. So next week, Big E will put his title on the line again against Apollo Crews. Why? Hell if I should know. Just because you beat Sami Zayn doesn't mean you get another title shot. Also next week, two of the best that WWE have right now are going to go... To an obstacle course. That's right. Bailey and Bell and Bianca Belair are going to participate in an obstacle course. Gee, majority of 2020, Bailey was your SmackDown Women's Champion. Best friends with Sasha Banks for majority of the year, then enemy of Sasha Banks for about a month, and then the second she stopped feuding with ba- with Sasha Banks, Bailey just fell off the face of the earth. And now she's reduced to doing things like this obstacle course. Wow. Can we just put these two in a match and get it over with? Oh, that's right. They've had a match before, haven't they? And I'm pretty sure Bailey won by, by, by nefarious means or shenanigans. Wow. This, this just disappoints me. But I'm, I shouldn't be surprised and neither should you. So we get to the main event segment. In which Roman Reigns comes out and everyone else comes out. Then Adam Pierce comes out. He sits down. Okay, well, I'm going to go over that. Basically, what happens is they sit down. Adam Pierce signs the contract. Roman Reigns signs the contract. And, she, and he's like, Adam Pierce is like, I've been waiting all night for you to sign this contract. He leaves the ring without saying another word. Starts heading up the ramp, and his knee, he starts fainting. And he starts his knee starts limping, and he starts limping even worse. And he's like, "Man, my knee just—it's one of those old injuries, you know, you know, from just years of wrestling. It's it's an injury that just keeps piling up. And I don't know if I'm going to be medically cleared for a match. And just like every contract the WWE says, card subject to change." And I need to find a suitable replacement. And that suitable replacement is 
Kevin Owens. That's right. Even though Kevin Owens lost the cage match, he lost the TLC match. It's going to be Kevin Owens versus Roman Reigns in a T in a last man standing match. Oh my god, why? I mean, honestly this just tells you they have nobody else because they want everyone else on the Rumble. Kevin Owens is it. Which means we get a rematch against uh, we, we get a rematch from what was it? 2017's Royal Rumble when Kevin Owens was the Universal Champion and Roman Reigns was going up against him when Braun Strowman made his appearance and destroyed Roman Reigns, caused, costing him the match. Yeah, this time around will probably be a lot better because that match absolutely fucking sucked and it wasn't Kevin Owens' fault, it was just Roman Reigns was in the wrong, was miscast as a good guy. How, how, you want, how much you want to bet it's going to be two on one for the majority of the match? Do I want to see Kevin Owens versus Roman Reigns again? Not really. We saw it twice. And Kevin Owens lost both times quite easily. Because of, because pretty much because of Jey Uso. What's going to stop Jey Uso from being in the last man stand? Like uh, getting involved in this last man standing match. Since they can go everywhere. They can go anywhere in the scene. And, and honestly, I would love to see this last man standing match. Go to the other part of Tropicana Field that isn't being used. Because if you didn't know, they cut off like half of Tropicana Field and that's what they're using for the Thunderdome. I think that would be that would be interesting to see what they do there. But it is it is gonna be Kevin Owens versus Roman Reigns for the third time. Hopefully then this is gonna probably be it because or they'll wait if especially if the Elimination Chamber is well actually no. I can see the Elimination Chamber being either A, the number one contendership for the Universal Championship, or B, will be Roman putting his title on the line. Most likely, probably A. But we'll have to wait and see what happens. The Royal Rumble is going to be coming to you at the end of the month. And SmackDown, that was it. Hit that subscribe button, comment down below, like or dislike this video. Find me on Minds at The France Club. Find me on Twitch.tv slash The France Club. And find me on Instagram at The France Club. And I will see you guys on... Monday, because I don't give a shit about Hard to Kill, even if Kenny Omega's there. Until then, my name is France, and I'll see you guys later.